you go. Yeah. As Let's soon as it. I. Okay, so we're live. So now you can share it. Uh, it's on Kayak Jacks. And. Okay, we'll probably have some people getting on here pretty quick. All right. And we'll get this shared and we'll start talking. Sounds great. On a, on a cold, blustery <laughs> Wednesday night. Yeah, here, let me let me get it shared on my page real quick. Sure, sure. I'm doing the same thing right now. All right. I just got to edit. I thought we were live. I think Does we are. Live? Does it show, show you live there? Do you see yours live? I think so. Mine is not showing live. Come on. Nope, I don't have a live view yet. Do you see it live? Let me look. Okay. Mm, it seems, it, yeah, but it's a little delayed. Oh, it shows it live now. Okay, there we are. Okay. So share. Copy link. There we go. All right. Live. All right, good. There's no take backs. No take backs now. <laughs> no, there's no editing out all my terrible words. So I better well, watch it. Yeah. Remember, we're a we're a PG uh, six show. Perfect. <laughs> it's good because I'm PG five. Okay. All right. So. Okay. All right, so we're live. All right, we got some people on. All right, hey, if you, if hey, Todd, Todd Patrick, you know him? I know Todd Patrick. Hey, hey Todd. Hey, are you on the road, Todd? Let's see he was he, went, he was singing while driving today. It was Todd Patrick karaoke on the road, which I fully one hundred percent approve of. <laughs> There's Cody. Uh, we froze up there for a minute. Cody Prather. Yeah. Uh, hey, Cody's been having some, uh, some been on some cold water too here lately. Yeah, I saw, it looked like he just had like this much of his face sticking out. So yeah. like the camera could, yeah. the camera could be right on his uh, eyeball and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Todd's in Athens, Georgia. Boy, he gets around too. We should have. I should have him on as a road warrior as well. Huh? He is a road warrior. So is Cody. Yeah, they Both both. Yeah. Sarah. Everybody's driving around circles around here. Yeah. You have to be in this sport, right? <laughs> so while I we're talking, yeah, while we're talking here, guys, we have we have Kate Field, Catherine Field on the night. Uh, Kate at Kate Fishing, right? Kate Fishing. Yeah. And That's what uh, my dirty there, hat says. There you go. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about uh, being a road warrior tonight. We're going to talk about fishing. Uh, and also, if any of you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them in and we'll go over them. And so I like questions. this is live, so I can't get around it's, them. It's live. Yeah. And, you know, each Wednesday night at about 730, I try to do this. Now, last Wednesday, I couldn't. I had to take I, I, I took a, a young man to go see his mentor in a basketball game. And that was more I thought that week so we did that and that was a lot of fun and then uh, but usually Wednesdays there's no activities but I did just get back from our conference speech tournament and hopefully I'll find out who won medals we had 12 finalists so is that like we'll, debate yeah kind of, it's kind of like that except you're not you're just talking to yourself <laughs> so, oh man I would ace that yeah yeah there you go I don't love that. <laughs> so so yeah they, they, they were did really well it's fun watching them today I did that the whole day and uh, so Todd's going to Todd's we're going to get to that, Todd. We're going to uh, tell. Uh oh, froze out. And encourage a few. Hopefully we don't cut out. Kate, are you I'm cutting out a little bit? Or not? No, you froze for a little okay. bit, but I don't, I don't okay, know if that's good might. for you. If my wife gets online upstairs, sometimes it freezes up and I got to go up and debate. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, she might be watching. I don't know here. So yeah, um, she come and join you. She she was just here a couple minutes ago. She went back up. She, this right. is the man cave where I'm at. 
And 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 we just had our house. Clean. We had our house clean today. And I, and she said, yeah, the whole house. And I'm like, she goes, no, not the basement. I'm like, what? I need some help. <laughs> so so the shop and everything's still kind of, I don't know, dusty. But uh, anyway, we got Kate Field on. And we're going to talk about uh, her story. And uh, I, I know some guys were excited to hear your story tonight and what you're doing. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. I think we've got a few people on. So, um, so first of all, let's find out where you're. Well, first of all, where are you at right now? <laughs> that is a good question. I am in uh, I'm in Flint, Texas. Uh, I just went outside and poured salt on the steps of this Airbnb because it's wow. icy. <laughs> Out. Wow. So, so when I was at Lake Fork, it was so icy. Uh, we went to dollar store and got all these like things of Morton salt. And so I've been carrying around barrels of salt in my truck, uh, which has been perfect for every Texas tournament that I fished so far this month. Uh, so, wow. but. so, so you, so you're in Texas, mm -hmm. you're going to fish, uh, the all American. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah I did. I started doing that series last year um, and I really liked it. It's a lot of different lakes, uh, a lot of really sort of a Midwest focused. And that's something. Yeah, I'm, I'm fishing the All-American <laughs> Palestine. I have fished Palestine once for um, what was it? The Texas Kayak Championship last year. I went in really without any practice and it was similar to now. So it, it's going to be a grind. I feel like I, uh, maybe someday I'll learn about fishing in February anywhere for, for kayak tournaments. Well, but I, I was thinking I about that. I might not to get depressed about it because yeah. it's, it's I, I was thinking very about that. difficult. Yeah. I, I was thinking about that on the way home tonight that this is basically the snowbird season. Yeah. <laughs> so Yeah. So Lake Fork was ice storm. Yeah. And... Toledo Bend was a cold front. I was going to do Palestine last week, and I didn't feel up to it. So Palestine this weekend for the All-American. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going up to Arkansas, and I really have this sneaking suspicion that I'm probably eating another cold front. We'll see what happens. Yeah, they, they're they about every few days right now. And uh, you get the beginning of March coming in, which means a lot yeah. of wind there. So Anyway, we got a, we got quite a few on here. James Leggett's on, and Sam Burke, and Casey Casey Carr, and Kathy Pauly. Yeah, I like a, I like the All American though. Um, oh yeah, they and they do. And the yeah. thing I was gonna say was, I discovered just I got to fish lakes that I just never would have normally gone to, like mm -hmm. uh, Lake Wilson in Kansas is now one of my favorite places to mm -hmm. to go fish. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Cody, do you feel that ice fishing in Utah has prepared you to ice fish in Texas? Um, ice fish in Texas. So I have never actually ice fished ever, like in a tent on frozen ice or anything like that ever. Um, I always would go to a place that had geothermal springs because that's where the fish would be and I could fish there. But uh mm -hmm. But I fish cold weather, cold water and stuff in Utah. But the difference is uh, usually there it's cold and it's deep structure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like 40 or 50 feet deep. So mm -hmm. the lakes here aren't really the, that kind of environment, at least the ones I fish so far. So it's a little bit challenging, but I use a lot of the same ideas mm -hmm. and I'm not going to say what they are yet, but basically I just, I look for things that I would look for when it's cold down in Utah that I would try and fish. And mm -hmm. so far it has not helped all the time, all the time, but yeah. different style of fishing. So you're in Texas. Now you're from Utah, right? All your, are yeah. you lived all your life? No, <laughs> no, I'm a transplant. I've been there since 2014 or something oh. like that. I've oh. spent most of my time in the Pacific Northwest. So really? up in Puget Sound, that corner. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Sandy. Yeah. yeah old San Sandy's awesome gal. Have you met Sandy before? I have not met her in person. No. Oh, she's uh -huh. she's great. We we met. We actually met at a campsite at a tournament a couple of years ago. They were next to me what? at the campsite. 
or I was next to them, however you want to say it, but mm -hmm. uh, great, great people. Uh, Clay and Clay and Sandy. Josh uh, Booth says Wilson's going to be a, uh, a blast this year too. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. The problem is it's paired against the Susquehanna River for the Hobie BOS. Well, you got to make a choice. Flip a coin. And it might be a really good thing that I have a love-hate relationship with the Susquehanna. And I'm go. all love about Lake Wilson. So. Okay. so I might be in Kansas instead. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll okay. See. So let's go back to So what? Now, you are you say you're retired, right? Yeah. Okay. I am. I, I know what that's like for like two weeks. But I'm like retired. I'm like personally early retirement it isn't like yeah. i i hit yeah. i didn't hit some age threshold where something kicks in and starts sending me checks oh you just i'm in the i'm the i'm i punch in my own ticket retired that's okay i get i get it now mine's different yeah i've reached the age of maturity <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not anywhere close to the maturity age yet. anyway the wi-fi is going to kind of cut out on us a little bit here but but here's the thing though is that um I know what it's like to be retired, say the word retired, for about two weeks, and then I got another job. And now I'm going to be officially retired from education after 40 years. And, but I want, I brought you on mainly because there's a lot of us that are baby boomer guys that are like wanting to travel, mm -hmm. wanting to see what, what it's, and I've done a lot of that, but I haven't done it for long periods of time like you have. Yeah. You know? And so that's going to be part of tonight's episode is, is, is seeing what, how you do that. But you, you punched your ticket. I did. You're, you're living the dream. What did you do? <laughs> what did I'm you... living the dream. Yeah. I you, am. You are. I am living the dream. So what, what did you do? I mean. Wh what do you mean? What did I what do? Was your, what did you do? Every occupation has something to do with helping people. What did you do? Uh, I worked in the gaming industry. Well, I mean, before that, I worked like a, I did about 10 years in, um, I did neuroimaging research at wow. the University of Washington. Um, and then I changed career paths and went into gaming, video games. And I did that for 15 years and sat in a glass cage. And <laughs> we got and cut then out. What's that? We got cut out there for a bit. You did neuro, neuro, neuro something research. Neuroimaging. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then what? And then I did video games. I worked in video game industry for about 15 years. Did you create them or what did you do? I did a variety of different things. I mean, oh, okay. I did uh, game design. I did testing. I did marketing. I did... Wow. Social media. I did all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, so neuro. Apparently I'm smart or something. <laughs> You're smart. You know, uh, you, did you have to take ACT in high school? I don't remember. Probably. Uh, I, I did. I got the best score he gets a 36. I got a seven because I, <laughs> I spelled the name right. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Okay. I I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, so let's so let's now go to what you do now. And I and we know I, I don't see you pulling a camper. I see you pulling no. a bag on a trailer and a pickup. So what what are you you're, you've been on the road for what, how many years now? A couple of years, three years, maybe or more? I started in July of 2020. OK, well, June of 20 end of June of 2020. So that's okay. what like a couple of years almost a couple of years almost a couple of years yeah and what what's a lot of the same clothes yeah. what what spawned that's that idea what spawned you to do that um well i started doing some kayak tournaments uh local in utah mm -hmm. and i tried a couple national ones um i don't know i was at work all the time and while i'd be working i had like this other screen in my head while i was working that was thinking about fishing and tournaments and doing all that and um when covid hit we had to go and just uh 
Sorry, I don't know if we cut out or what. Yeah, we did a little bit. We did a little bit there. All right. Well, when COVID hit, mm -hmm. I drove, I did like Kentucky Lake and I drove like 30 something hours to get back to my house to work in my spare bedroom <laughs> remotely. And I thought, what the heck am I, why am I here? Why am I working from my spare bedroom? I could be working from anywhere to do that. So, mm -hmm. so I just put some clothes in a bag and grab my computer and I, for, uh, from till about Jan till January of 21, I, I worked full time and did tournaments. So I, I would like drive, um, mm -hmm. I'd work all day and then I'd try and get like a late checkout and then I would drive like till 1, 1 a.m. or something to the next place, midnight 1 a.m. and then get like a few hours sleep and then work all day and I'd like bunny hop mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then, you know, try and get some pre-fishing in and do tournaments and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. but then oh. I just, what's that? I said, wow. <laughs> it was, it was, you know, it, it worked for a while, but um, I just felt like, I don't know. I had, I had some issues with my, I have like a medical, I know this thing cut out, didn't it? Like stopped again. I might try and get it on. Are you still there? <laughs> what even works? Uh, okay, I'm back. Hold on a second. <laughs> I had to go check the internet here because it's not, I don't know what's going on tonight. Am I freezing or are you freezing? Because you're, you're you're freezing up and then I freeze up after that. Yeah. Well, so, that's sort of, I'm just gonna tell you, Mario. That's sort of how things roll. So I'm just gonna. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, hey, we just lost 12, 12 fish. What the heck? We're gonna keep going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so then you took off. You started fishing, and and uh, so where where do you stay when you go on these road trips? <laughs> So, yeah, Tyler says, he says, Marty. So, um, I primarily do Airbnbs or hotels or I stay at, at friends' places. Mm -hmm. um, I could camp, but being a freewheeling retiree, 51-year-old woman, I sort of like mm -hmm. having a bed to sleep in and mm -hmm. a shower and mm -hmm. things like that. I don't feel like sleeping on the ground and mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel safer in yeah. a house than I do yeah. in a tent in some campground right now. So yeah, I, get I mean, it. I could, I could do it, but, but I can afford not to. So I'm mm -hmm. not gonna, <laughs> so, so yeah. that's what I'm doing. Now I, for me, I drive around a bass cave. Yeah. And, and I sleep in that and I love it. I just love camping. Yeah. You know, when I go and that's actually, I could just go camp and not fish of it, you know, it, yeah. it's, which I love it, but, but I, uh, yeah, it's just, I'm just not there right now in my life. I yeah, like having, yeah. Yeah. I like going to different places and staying in different places and sure. is sure, probably sure. the, not the cheapest way to go. Um, but I'm not doing this to do it the chip cheapest way. I'm really just doing it the mm -hmm. way I want to do it and the way I like it. And maybe I yeah, thought about getting like a sprinter van or, or, mm -hmm. and I've thought about getting like a truck camper. I've got, I actually do have a truck, another truck and a camper, mm -hmm. but it gets like mm -hmm. seven miles of the gallon. And uh, it's not a four season camper. It's from like 1968 and it doesn't have plugins and it's a, the way the gas prices are and the amount of miles I cover, it's just yeah. not economical. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I get it. It's like on that National Lampoon vacation camper, like uncle, whatever comes in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, it's PG. Don't even. It's PG. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so, what can you what can you give us for tips like when you're taking these long journeys what can you give a guy that hasn't done this yet what would you what would be some things you they could do that's going to save them hassle maybe some challenges that you've had on the road that they could learn from being on the road 
Spare hubs for your trailer if you're pulling a trailer. <laughs> I've learned this the yeah, hard way. Yeah, yeah. that's um, good. Yeah, having one of those, uh, just a lot of spare different stuff. So now I've got, when I started in and have all that, so now I've got like a, you know, one of those four by uh, lug wrench things for taking uh, yeah, your tires yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. Jack stands. I've got uh, I've got a blow torch. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yep. stuff that you don't think you might need, and you end up you actually do need it. So mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot more tools than I had yeah. left with that I've I've gone, but definitely spare. I've got a grease gun that I carry with me so I can grease uh, the bearings on my trailer and uh, when I'm on the road and. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely, uh, besides all the tools, I mean, I, I carry like a, uh, you know, because I'm always on the go with my batteries. So I always have like, mm -hmm. I've got like a industrial surge protector so I can charge everything mm -hmm. at once. And, you know, it's just stuff that you just don't think about that you actually need and you, you yeah. do. But mainly it's just, thinking about what you might need when you're out in the middle of Oklahoma somewhere on a two lane road that Google took you down mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and your hub burned out, <laughs> yeah. you know, what are you going to do with that? And, and you don't always, I guess, don't rely on AAA because I had yeah. time where yeah. I actually got, um, I got a nail in my tire at Sam Rayburn and I called AAA and I don't know what happened, but after a couple hours, like nobody was showing up and, mm -hmm. and, uh, I had called my friend, Brian. I'm like, man, I'm like on some, the one place I could find cell service is where I stopped mm -hmm. so all AAA and they hadn't shown up after a couple hours. And he's mm -hmm. like, I can come help you. And I didn't know, like I had got this, I had a, like a Ford edge that I was pulling stuff with for a while. Um, and I got this new truck. So I would say learn, because I'm used to old trucks where you get up underneath and you have your spare, you just turn a thing and it drops down. But yeah. I guess people steal your spares now. Yeah. So I didn't know that my fancy key fob actually was like it pulls apart and it's a key and it sticks in the fender and you got to unlock something and then mm -hmm. stick another tool in there and like lower everything. Like I couldn't figure out how to get the spare down on my truck <laughs> so so uh yeah a friend actually came and helped me and it turned out AAA completely lost my my help order so like when i called them to cancel it after we changed after three hours and changed the new top changed the tire on my truck mm -hmm. uh called AAA to cancel it and they hadn't even like had a record of it so i would have just been you know luckily i had a friend come help me because i would have just been sitting out there in the dark at Hmm. <laughs> Sam Rayburn waiting for some some tro truck driver, but wow, yeah, I, I know. Uh, besides that, I I know you take tools. I I take a power drill, um, the uh, water tanks, gas tank. I take an extra gas tank as well. All that because you just don't know. I was on this. There's a story. I was going to uh, Lake Fork one time, and I was in Oklahoma. You know that reservation highway, highway yeah. you got the toll get on there. Um, my T broke on my trailer. Oh my god! And goodness. snapped, and so I actually bungeed it all together, and then got to a Home Depot down there in Texas, and then I bolted. You put more U bolts on it and bolted it together uh, just to get through the trip. But you never know; you don't know what's going to happen. No, so and, it helps to have that. Yeah. Uh, last year on my travels, I did end up buying a, another extra drill. And a jigsaw. Wow. <laughs> I, I punched a hole in the uh, in the hull of my kayak um, where my seat where my seat went into the kayak. I don't know what happened, but it I had a hole in my hull, and so uh, I got a jigsaw and all the stuff, and used a kitchen cutting board and like jerry rigged basically a a stand over this hole in my hull for a while. I, so I could fish the tournament <laughs> tournaments with my kitchen cutting board and my kayak. But sometimes you got to do that. Yeah. Okay. So real quick, uh, Todd Patrick was mentioning that a Sprinter van 
uh, is a good good choice. And he says he gets 18 miles a gallon. And um, Sandy Roberts likes my says my cooking's good out of the Bass Cave. <laughs> The only then, thing is, like, I want, like, if I get something, I'd like to get a camper. If I got a camper, which I, I've thought about it, mm -hmm. um, I want one that I could take off and leave at the campground. Mm -hmm. I just have a thing about leaving my house at a boat ramp. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, I just, you know, I think it's easier if you're, like, in your van and you go to a tournament and then you go home. Mm -hmm. But when you are living on the road. Mm -hmm. for years at a time mm -hmm. leaving your house at a boat ramp feels really sketchy to me especially yeah. you know like i have my yeah. you know my computers or stuff like that i don't like to leave mm -hmm. things that are important to me sitting mm -hmm. in my house at a boat ramp so that's yeah. why i prefer airbnbs right now or if i had if i had a camper and could take it off and then take my truck down there or however that worked even if it was like a, a fifth wheel or something like that just mm -hmm. I don't want to leave it. Mm -hmm. There's some boat ramps are pretty sketchy sometimes. So yeah, yeah. You know, seen I usually am armed. <laughs> so I just I don't know. I get it. We I've I've left mine at ramps sometimes and sometimes at campsites. I feel safer leaving my camper at a campsite than I do at the boat ramp for sure. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, at the boat ramp, I try to park where there's a few other people sometimes because. Some of those remote ones, uh, they are sketchy. There's some, we, we've come across some strange things uh, at, at bigger lakes. Um, I, went to, um, I went to one boat ramp this last year uh, with unloading and these guys pulled up sort of slow, like creeped really slow. Yeah. yeah. And then they went up just a bump up the hill a little bit and parked there and waited. Mm -hmm. while I was unloading and I was like okay and they waited extraordinarily long and didn't get out of the car or anything and I'm like mm -hmm. I, you know like all my red flags are going off like this is really bad yeah, yeah. and uh I just you know I have my pistol and yeah. I actually <laughs> what I you know I do things a little unconventionally so I just walked straight up to their truck, took a picture of their license plate with my pistol, my pocket. Wow. And they saw me take a picture of their license plate and they took off. Wow. And uh, then I went and packed up and left because I wasn't going oh, <laughs> to stay there after that. But I thought if something happens, they're going to have to fight me and try and get their license plate off my phone. Yeah. But uh, yeah. they, you know, they weren't prepared for some chick coming up there taking a picture of them. So. Yeah. Good. That's a good. Well, I think it's a good move. I don't know, but um, it I obviously mean, didn't go away. Well, yeah. And then at rest stops. I don't like to stop at rest stops yeah. either. And Todd was talking about loves. I, that's why I always go to like a loves travel stop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, last 2020, I stopped at a rest stop and I was just checking stuff on my trailer and I had my door, my, my Ford open my driver's side and this guy it was near the trucks and this guy came around one of the trucks and came towards me and i, I was like all my like warning bells are like this is bad uh -huh. and so i got but put the door my car door between me and him so it was open so if i need to get in there i could get in there and he was probably about six or seven feet away from me on the other side of the door and he goes uh starts talking to me like he's a salesman and then he pulls out a taser Jeez. And he say, he says, he says, do you want to see my taser? And he sets it off and that thing starts crackling, right? Yeah. And I said, do you want to see my pistol? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, just, he just took off. You know, he just ran. Wow. And I got in the car and I took off too. I wasn't going to stick around and see what happened. And he Ooh. looked like, it was funny. It was like a look of like a Vin Diesel sort of like built right. like Vin Diesel with like bald head and like a white wow. hair and stuff. But I mean, no, who comes up to anybody at a rest right. stop, let alone a woman by herself and like fires off a taser. Yeah. I mean, the main, the main thing is to be aware of your surroundings. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I know I was in a sketchy area down in St. Louis and I was on E and I didn't realize it. And I pulled up there and there was some, uh, interesting people around me i got in i got about three four dollars worth of gas and got out of there mm -hmm. <laughs> just i'd left because it was like it was 
it was not it didn't look good to me so uh, that's a that's would be probably my biggest tip especially if okay. you're a woman doing any of this is yeah be, be smart yeah. <laughs> yeah well now now well, I'll, that, like two minutes faster it may not be worth that two minutes to go down that lonely road yeah well now that you guys know that it's not real safe out there just everybody stay home <laughs> I'm just, it, but there are, the thing is, is when you're on the road, there is that kind of stuff out there. It happens. And and the other thing is when you're traveling, if you're traveling alone, uh, these middle of the night excursions, you know, just, just really be aware of where you're at and where you're parking. And uh, when you're going in and out of places and people watching you and stuff, you got to really be aware of that and to stay safe that way. And, and uh, also be ready to use your phone if you need the 911 or something like that. Mm -hmm to call but i'll let yeah. somebody know where you're going um yeah. often i'll yeah. put up something on google maps and, yeah. and I'll, yeah. I'll send it to somebody yeah. you know yeah there you go but, yeah so what uh how many miles did you travel last year oh uh, i don't know google said i did two and a half times around the world so that's over fifty thousand. yeah <laughs> 50, 65,000 or so, maybe. Something like that. Wow. Wow. It felt like it. <laughs> okay, so in all those miles, what was your favorite place that you have been to in the past year? That's not very fair, Marty. I don't think I, I have one. Um, I, well, you can name a couple. I don't care. Whatever. What some Some favorite locations that you've been to, it does not have to be fishing related. Okay. It can be anything. Um, well, like I said, I did enjoy Kansas, and I, I met some friends out there, Roland and Karen Card. Uh, they've got an art studio out there in Ketchy, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And we went out. Um, I guess he's got, I don't, I don't know how everything works, but he leases some access on some lake on some ranch. And there's no roads, so, like, you, you pull off. Mm -hmm. And you go in through this cattle gate and you just drive across the prairie, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I was driving through the prairie down into this gully and we went and fished on this lake where mm -hmm. probably nobody's fished in a, who mm -hmm. at least he said at least a year, nobody's been down there. But mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoyed that because the fish had no clue about any lures and it was crystal clear. So it gave me opportunity. Like I was standing up, with like a, a little fluke with an underspin on it. Mm -hmm. And I could see the bass. They'd just come right up to the boat, you know? And so mm -hmm. I could, I was toying with them, just mm -hmm. jigging that thing up and down. It's like playing with cats, Marty. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, I'm that's like, amazing. cats with a laser pointer. And so yeah, you see yeah. them, they'd like swipe at it and I'd pull it out of the way so they couldn't get it. Yeah. And they'd go behind a, a, a stalk of vegetation and like try and wait for it to come and ambush it. And, and it was just, yeah amazing to sit there and just play with them like that yeah um and that was in kansas that was in kansas yeah kind of like you know it's kind of how it is in nebraska too when some of these they're like walk-ins they call them walk-ins mm -hmm. you just open the gate and there's no road you just drive down to the lake and yeah some, well some of them you can't a lot of them you have to take your kayak and drag it or use your wheels to get down there because they they call that's why they call them walk-ins but some guys if you get permission will allow you to drive in yeah you know so that was that was pretty cool, okay. um, and I would say most of it's just been able to meet meet friends along the way. Um, yeah. yeah, I did some fishing up in New Hampshire with some friends on these different lakes back up in New Hampshire. That was amazing with Judy and John Richardson, and mm -hmm. and I even like even met with Cody and Sarah. I met up with them at Niagara Falls, and that was that was a blast. Went on oh, the yeah. went on the Maid of the Mist boat and. I'd mm -hmm. never seen Niagara Falls, but that I just enjoyed just mm -hmm. being out on the road, being able when you spend so much time alone, yeah, by yourself. Yeah. You're yeah. out in the boat alone. You're at ramps alone. You're driving alone. That yeah. time that you get to spend uh, with your yeah. friends or in fellowship with other people is really yeah. super precious, and and yeah. you you don't realize it till you're out there, and that's a hard thing when you're. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons I don't like to camp so much, um, especially at tournaments. I like to get a house and share it with other people if I can, because 
when you're alone by yourself all the time, then you go sit in some tent by yourself. It's just yeah. you yeah. you really want to have that kind of mm -hmm. contact with people that's meaningful yeah. and be with yeah. you want to spend time that quality time with people that you love and care about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and I and I get that, you know, and here here's something here might be a difference right now between you and me. I mm -hmm. I love being around people. Obviously, my job tells you that. But for me, when I go fishing, it's to go into solitude. Yeah. <laughs> because of the high, I'm just around people 24 seven here, you know? Right. And so for me, it's, it's like, I just go there to rejuvenate, but then after a day or so, then I'm back to, you know, okay, I want to be around people again, you know, but sometimes yeah. that that's that little break that we need. But I realize what you're saying though. I might be, there's been times where I've gone, you know, uh, um, a month or so mm -hmm. without any, without being, having any kind of interaction with people that I knew or friends or anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you go to like a, a mm -hmm. restaurant or something, mm -hmm. but it's just not the same as having that kind of connection with yeah. people. And yeah. 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 so for me, that it's, you value that kind of interaction more when yeah. you when yeah. you can spend it with people, and yeah. I think that's the hard part of people who who dream of getting on the road and and doing all this. It's not. I mean, it's challenging because uh, wherever you go, there you are, right? So yeah. Yeah. you better like yourself a whole heck of a lot if you're going <laughs> to go on the road, because if you are completely <laughs> self-loathing you're going to be stuck with your worst enemy 24 7 so you you know <laughs> yeah. you, gotta, you gotta be prepared that it's going to be you and your mind a lot and yeah. and yeah. value those interactions that you can make now let's talk about your things Catherine. or should i call you kate or Catherine? whichever okay i've kate's been calling you kate lately you know but yeah kate's fine okay so you when did you have do you have a motor on your kayak I do have one that I take on and off. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you take yeah. So, do, yeah. what kind of kayak do you have? I have a Hobie Pro Angler fourteen three sixty. Okay, and uh, and then um, what what uh, size? A big motor? Is it a Torquedo? Is it? I have other? a Torquedo. I bought a Torquedo eleven oh three. Okay. The bigger one. Yeah, I just bought one of those. It's still in the box. <laughs> Like, you need help like, installing it or putting it together. Let me know because yeah, I had yeah. asked because the instructions are a little challenging. Yeah, yeah. And it, In instructions being the yeah. key part about that. Yeah, I know. I've heard, <laughs> and you did the you did a little video on that. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, let's see. So, uh, uh, you let's see. You you answered a lot of my questions already. Uh, where do you see the, you know, you see <laughs> the growth of the kayak fishing community in the past, you know, two or three years? Where do you see it going after this? From what you, because you're on the road, you see things, you see the big tournaments, the big events. Where do you see it going? That's a good question. Thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I. <sighs> I'm still a relative newcomer in a way. I mean, oh. um, I would say, I mean, the growth of the participation is great, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know if it's an issue of COVID mm -hmm. or not, but it just, the kayak community feels so completely different. Uh, yeah. And maybe that's just, it was all, rose color glasses when I started but mm -hmm. but I feel like in some ways maybe COVID contributed a lot to this is that even with drive-through check-ins and whatnot I mean you might see a few people at ramps or stare at the A and B but you just aren't making those connections with people mm -hmm. and so I, f I find like on the larger tournaments it's the community is just the community aspect of it isn't as friendly feeling as it used to be. I think it's, mm -hmm. and maybe that'll change as people get 
as we are allowed to have more uh, in-person kind of get-togethers. Yeah. But having yeah. everything at arm's reach or everybody sits in their own car or everything's online, like, yeah. I feel like it's, you don't have that camaraderie that, or that feeling yeah. of camaraderie that was there before. And it, it feels a little cold. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think a lot of people get too caught up in trying to chase a piece of cardboard. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. there's only yeah. so many people are going to get a piece of cardboard yeah. out of it. Yeah. And I feel like they lose sight yeah. of what's right in front of them about yeah. what, what kayak fishing and the joy of it really is. Yeah. Uh, where it's always just this hyper competitive, mm -hmm. you know, as if we're like in the, mm -hmm. you know, top 50 bass boat kind of thing where we have hundred thousand dollar sponsors and everything. Most people don't have that. Yeah. Most people might ha be a pro staff or this or that. And, and yeah. maybe I'm going to say something that's controversial, but I just don't like, I want to try and win and I want to try and do well, but what's the point of doing that if you if you lose lose experience in that mm -hmm. you know yeah. no one's gonna, once the season's over everybody's gunning for the next thing nobody's gonna remember mm -hmm. who did what or when yeah. i mean yeah, yeah. yeah it's you, i'm gonna show you a picture just keep talking i'm gonna show you a picture all right. Well, that's pretty challenging. I'm going to talk to empty net. On the yeah. Okay. So, so this, this is what it's about for me. Yeah. Yes. That's several years ago when my son was real little. We spent every spare minute in kayaks going fishing. We traveled. In fact, uh, Kate, we took a, a an old Izuzu trooper. In fact, here, here's a second. Got it right here. <laughs> I love this. This is memory lane. Oh, this is off the wall. That. So here, you see that trooper there? Yeah. I still have. It's got two hundred and one thousand miles on it. That's great. And those are my sons, and and the younger one there. What we did is we took a twelve hundred mile trip and never left the state of Nebraska. That's awesome. Seven that days. Awesome. Yeah, seven days, and our goal was to see how many species we could catch. Yeah. And it was my 50th birthday that week. And we celebrated that in the middle of nowhere. But we just took off and did that. That's what it's about. The experience. It is about the experience. And yeah. like when you were asking me what were my most memorable things, mm -hmm. yeah. you did not hear me mention yeah. cash and a check. Right. Yeah. yeah. None of that. Because, I mean, that's great and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's something... Mm -hmm. we, we're all shooting for that. Yeah, we're all absolutely. trying yeah. for that. Yeah. And I'm not going to say I'm not competing. I'm absolutely, yeah. I love competing. That's part yeah. of the joy of it. Yeah. But I, I don't like the ugliness that comes out of yeah. that yeah. Yeah. ego driven kind of stuff that there's like a, uh, you know, there's a lot of clicks. There's a lot of this and that. And yeah. I think it, you know, a lot of, um, I think it's it's a turnoff. It doesn't it doesn't make room for new people. It doesn't make room for people who do things differently. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much more to that experience. If you ask people, especially when you like look at tournament recaps, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it'll be it'll be a recap of I caught my five fish doing this, but mm -hmm. I want to hear about like the, your experience that like people who do a video that show their experience, it isn't just always catching, mm -hmm. showing off only their top catch. Like I want to see like everything that you can relate to, which is, yeah. you know, getting, you know, the weather and trying to deal with what happens when you lose a big fish or just the beautiful. I've, I got more cameras on my boat this year just because I want to add more mm -hmm more of what i see mm -hmm. you know a lot of the wildlife and that experience because in the end when i'm out there by myself like mm -hmm. it's just me against the fish even though i'm yeah. on a leaderboard mm -hmm. hi hi cindy 
<laughs> I just think that's I just think that's the part that I see that yeah. I think about the growth mm -hmm. and I think the growth in tournaments mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. But the camaraderie isn't growing. Mm -hmm. It's like an inverse uh, you, you, an you inverse nailed it. Yeah. the more the more competition and people, it's like the camaraderie is inversely going down in the same way. And and you know, a lot of bad mouthing and everything else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that makes me a little sad because mm -hmm. that's nothing that I ever really got into kayak fishing for. And maybe I just do things really different. Mm -hmm. and, but and you know, Kate, I I've seen it all too that way. And I I I was in this from the birth of it. So I've seen it mm -hmm. grow from from one person. In the midwest to tens of thousands right mm -hmm. at the same time yes i've seen the same thing and you know what i'm guilty of it because sometimes i'm so competitive sometimes that i get caught up and i want to do so well but at the same time i don't for, i really don't forget who's out there with me yeah and the relationships that are built with that and there are some things happening now to help with that um but you're right there there's some that it's it, it's it, that's all it's about is okay how many checks are we going to have for this one how many you know, and yeah, I, I get into the, 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 the money part and everything, but it's still bottom line. I have some of the best friends of my life from this sport, you know, and even though I've never met you in person, you know, we were close. We're gonna though. We're, yeah, we're gonna. gonna. Yeah. Cause I got to guide you. And, yeah. Well, you're probably guiding me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But but the thing is, is that the friendships that have been made, whether when whether or not they're even a kayak angler, yeah. just the friendships that we've made across the country of people, just because we met them at, at, at a lake or at a store or wherever, it's the, those you can't put a price tag on that. That's bigger than the than the two thousand dollar check. Th mm -hmm. Those checks are nice. They, they might pay for your gas and a couple meals, you know. But but other than that, it's nothing. Now, now, yeah, you sponsor yourself mainly. I do have sponsors, but at the same time, yeah. a lot of mine was not. I went and said, "Hey, uh, hey, Bass Pro Shops, would you sponsor me because I'm a kayak angler?" It was not that at all. Mm -hmm. It was they asked me to do a seminar because they thought it would help people grow the sport, and then they said, "Hey, we want you to kind of be on board with us and kind of help grow this sport through with us on board." So I said, yeah. So, you know, it's to me, it's not about like I'm going to go hunt down sponsors. They've all everybody that I have has come to me, mm -hmm. you know, and I know some other guys that way, too. But at the same time, I use those products and I'm going to promote them for the benefit of the community, not for the benefit of me. Yeah. yeah. And that's I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I, the sponsors I have are all things mm -hmm. that I use all the time. Yeah. And yeah, I want to be yeah. authentic in that. Like, this yeah. is what I use and this yeah. is how I use it. But yeah. I just, there's, there's, I don't know. I just, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't do this. Uh, I don't do this as like a job yeah. to make a living yeah. or anything. This, <laughs> But it is a, a way of life for me. And I'm on a different path than that. And, yeah. A lot of that is just w with my own faith. And mm -hmm. I really feel like God has me on this journey. And mm -hmm. a lot of this is, you know, I'm asking God, where do I go? And so, mm -hmm. in my schedule change all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I feel even like this year, like there's so much, so much more um, that is important. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go to a kayak tournament, but sometimes when I go to this kayak tournament, there's like other things that are all in play that God's got going on that mm -hmm. to me, like no one will ever know about, but they're just as important. Right. Um, they're yeah. just as important in, and mm -hmm. in my life or in somebody else's life. And yeah. I don't know. I just think there could be a lot of kinder, gentler, mm -hmm. a lot more love. Mm -hmm. I sound like a kayak hippie, but no, that's okay. Cause that's okay. I, I get what you're saying. Cause that's how it started. That's how it started. I think it needs that because that, I think it gets touted is that's how the kayak community gets. And I know of some people mm -hmm. 
So that's how it was touted. Kayak community is great camaraderie mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. And then, and then they get in it and they get lamb blasted or people say bad things or it gets really vicious. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, well, why would I want to do this? I just like the fish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I know people who have quit doing tournaments because of the attitudes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm the backstabbing and all that stuff. Cause all mm -hmm. they want to do is go fish and hang out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the tournaments yeah. were fun when it was a camaraderie and we were all, mm -hmm. we were competing, but we weren't tearing each other down. We were lifting each other up still. Right. Right. And there's not a lot of that mm -hmm. going on anymore. Um, and, it, and it is there. It, it is there, but it, you're right. It has, it has gotten to a, a, a point where, uh, we have to be aware of what, what we're doing when we're out there and who, and you know, like, like Brent Salfin says here, uh, if someone asks a question to a club on Facebook page and no one answers them, that's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know? Brent. And you know, I, I'll tell you what, Kate, the other day I had a guy ask me, he says, Hey, what are you using in the cold water to catch those big bass? I, I didn't even shy away from it. Said, you know what? Here's what you do. Here's what you can do. This is what I do. I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong to him. I just say, this is what I do. Then he says, well, I want to join uh, this club, but they don't allow this. And I said, look, if if they don't allow what you have, I have an extra kayak you can use anytime. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how we got to be. Yes. And and not have these restrictions. If it floats, Kate, you, I mean, you, we don't you don't know me in my background too much, but I can tell you this. <laughs> all, all my life. I, have, I like I like I like where you're going, Marty. Okay. I, I have been on the water my whole life. I lived in the beach. I lived in Hawaii. I've lived by the ocean. I lived by lakes. By you know, and, but the thing is, I've always found a way to get on them, whether it's a kneeboard, a surfboard, or a zodiac boat, or a canoe, or a homemade wooden boat that sunk. You know, whatever I can find to get on the water is what I did. And when I discovered the kayak over two decades ago, I was like, "This is it." And I, I sold my boat at that when I, I that year I bought that kayak. I sold my boat and said, this is how I'm going to fish. And I have not gone the other way since, you know, because it's just you're so close to the water. And yeah. speaking of which, you talk about seeing those things out there. You know, I was down. I can't remember what tournament. Oh, table. Uh, uh, you were there, Truman. Yeah. Four, four otters are playing back in this. Oh, court, yeah. You know, how how much better does it get than that? I know. And that's what I want. Like, yeah. like those are the things that I wish I had on film. Like last year when I was on Sam Rayburn, yeah. I was, you know, everything was so flooded and I was fishing over these flooded trees mm -hmm. and I could hear like the sound. Yeah. Yeah. Something, And I turned around at the edge of my boat is two otters stuck in a shrub and they're eating yeah. bait fish that they caught underneath my kayak. And they're just like snacking really loud. Oh, yeah. and the, wow. I was like, man, I wish I would have had, my cameras for that yeah. because that's the kind of cool stuff that yeah. that i think people just don't get to experience right. and and to be in the middle of that kind of amazing god's creation and to just see how it all works together mm -hmm. yeah one, one, one of my you gotta that's the joy that you gotta share with people right now i, I you know jim salmons mm -mm. you ever heard of him he has the kayak fishing show and this is like when it all Dennis Spike and it was Chad Hoover and myself and and, and Slow Ride Thompson. Tech. There wasn't very many guys out there. And I and I so I I, I got a hold of Jim Sands and I call him. I say, Jim, can you, will you take me fishing in the ocean? So, yeah. So I go, I go out there. I fly out and he takes me fishing in the Pacific Ocean. And we're going to go for Thresher Shark in, in a paddle kayak three miles offshore. That's that sounds right? like now, an adventure. We, we get past the waves. And he goes, hey, look to your right. And here's these porpoises coming out of the water. And he goes, oh, they're just checking you out. Right next to me, porpoises. Mm -hmm. And then a giant manta ray comes underneath me. Hmm. Then, we, then we go out further. And I didn't care whether I caught a thresher shark or not. I was already not going to put my legs in the water, number one. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when we were out there, all, you could see down probably 75 feet. It was that clear. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the way down, and all you saw was darting all over the place and kelp and everything. And then I hooked into a big barracuda, got that. 
And then an, a guy bias got a six foot thresher and another guy got a big elephant tuna. I was more happy for them than I would ever be for me. And that's what I'm going to get at here is that why can't we be happy for others and what they do? Exactly, Marty. I mean, exactly. You know, and that's, and that's something I don't see so much. Yeah, I mean, I used yeah. to be like that. And I, I used to, with some friends I had, I mean, mm -hmm. I knew I sucked, but I loved watching them succeed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you don't see that. It's mm -hmm. You see so much competition that you don't yeah. see the people yeah. supporting and cheering each other on, like mm -hmm. celebrating that somebody went and did something incredible, crazy. Yeah. It's sort yeah. of like a golf clap, like yeah. We're yeah. being kind that we're clapping for you, but secretly on the inside, we hate your guts yeah. no, and are going to make a, you know, going to make a report against you <laughs> trying to yeah. knock you out of there or something. It's just, well, I, I know that when I've seen a couple of your videos in the past, the joy you expressed, you were like, and you were having, the thing is you were having fun and you <laughs> were fishing. Like, I mean, like, like it was like, there was no tomorrow. You were like at the top of your game. And you were hauling these fish in, but you figured the best part is like what you did. You figure out the puzzle. That yeah. that's kind of cool to do that. And if it gets it you doesn't happen very often. <laughs> yeah, well, but if it gets you to the top, great. If it doesn't, I I I, I left the water knowing that I solved my puzzle where I was at. Yeah. You know, and that's that. And the other thing is, I have been in a tournament where I've not gotten a bite. Oh, me too. You know, um, in fact. Uh, Table Rock a couple years ago, Joshua Booth on her. He can tell you, I would. I had the greatest day of my life. The next day, I I got one fish. I think the whole day, you know, in the same area. Yeah. And it just that's just the way it is. You just got to accept that, and move on. And so it's a humbling sport, and it's it's you know, and and but at the same time, you can you can do some great things with it. But we do need, and that's why you're on here tonight because I envy your happiness and your joy. <laughs> you know oh, and, and even though you said you know what though it's been a struggle for me to yeah. try and because i've lost that a little bit i lost right. that for a while last yeah. year just with yeah. personal things and yeah. and finding that joy like yeah. i'm i'm fighting for it mm -hmm. i know my friend cody says fight for joy like i've been mm -hmm. literally fighting for it mm -hmm. because it's so easy to get mm -hmm pulled off of that and uh you know i hope i i'm hoping that's in my direction this year is so mm. different yeah you know i don't well, know the main I don't thing is, all the people right now with your fi fantasy kayak thing might want to take me take me off your yeah. teams but you know, it's not that i'm not going for it but i just yeah i don't know there's other things that are important and joy yeah. is is a top top yeah. of the list at that well, the thing is, uh, I know for me personally, and, and people know me for that, I'm going to go out of my way to say hi to people, tell them, hey, hey, good luck out there today. And tell, I'll, I'll tell them what I got. I, I'm not going to hide anything out there. I'm going to say, this is what I'm doing. And, and they might say, hey, where are you going? I'm going over here. Okay, I'll go over there. You know, we work it out, you know, and I, I even follow, you know, people that say I'm leaving. I'll go in, you know, just but we got to work together on it. And uh, I, I know it's 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 hard sometimes, but. You know, I'm. I feel like I got to be the guy that makes that move to to be the friendly person out there uh, when when we see people. The other thing is is uh, you know inviting people to talk about it afterwards, sitting on a fire or whatever, um, mm -hmm. doing those kinds of things. And I think we're. I, I belong to a group now. I think that's 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 got a great thing going. In Central states that they uh, they have a. It's a great bunch of guys and and they are trying to establish that, and bring that back again. You know. And, yeah. I'm not, and I'm not saying that to make anybody else feel bad. I'm just saying that's what they're doing to make people feel good. You know, I, I was a, uh, I joke with my friend, uh, one of my friends that I'm like quiet and ninja like, cause I know I'm not quiet and ninja like, yeah. Yeah. especially at a boat ramp. I'm probably like the yeah. noisiest person there, but like sometimes you go to a boat ramp and everybody's mean mugging each other and no one yeah. will talk. No one yeah. will say anything. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I like to just go in there and say hi to everybody and chit chat yeah. and have fun. And then it's yeah. like all of a sudden everybody remembers like that's how we used to be. Yeah. Well, you know? I, I'm going to take care like of that. Your friends going fishing instead of a bunch of people that are out to slice each other's throats about it. Well, I'm going to take care of that this year. I, I've installed a horn on my kayak 
that's louder <laughs> than a semi horn. And so I'm going to break up that little quietness there and say, oh. let's go, guy. You know, it's really fun. Oh my gosh. It's loud. it's super loud. I can really appreciate air horns. So I'm <laughs> really appreciative of that. Right. So it'll be fun. Michael Thomas, he's saying, you know, we should all go to the ceremony, congratulate the winners. And you know, and, and true. I mean, that's that's true. And you know, and Sharon and jo you know, Joshua Booth and, and Tyler Cole have done that with the All-American series as well. I, I haven't been, you know, I've been to the KBF, I've only been to a couple of Hobies and stuff. I've been to the BASS, but I will say that. All of them try. I know. I, I just want to say that I know that man Joshua Booth, what he's done with the central the, the central part, um, with everything is he is all about uh, helping everybody. And same with Tyler. And then and then uh, uh, I don't think I don't say that it comes from the organizations at all. It comes from the people. It comes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just think the community, okay. the camaraderie yeah. is. Yeah has room for improvement. <laughs> well, but, the lead, and that's, but here's the deal. Joshua is a leader though in that, mm -hmm. you know, you have to have those leaders to help that evolve as well. And, and, the, you know, and, and I, I feel that way too, that, that we have to, we have to, you know, people are doing the best they know how sometimes they don't know how to act. You don't, they don't know how to do that with people. So you show that by example. And yeah. so I think that's what Josh does. And Josh is saying here, it's the anglers and he's right. You know, and uh, we just have to show them how to be that way. But I, I think in overall, though, to yeah. to want to be loving towards our fellow mm -hmm. anglers and mm -hmm. be friendly and yeah. yeah, reach out that hand and introduce yourself and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and talk. It's yeah. it's almost yeah. like everybody's scared to say something. Like we're gonna find out your secret bait yeah. that you're catching <laughs> something on. And then, but the thing is, you go to you go to award ceremony. There'll be four or five people up there that caught them in four or five different ways. Yeah, absolutely. I'll catch them in different ways. And yeah, so yeah. how some guy uses his bait or whatever, it's you're going to catch them different than he does because you all fish different. Yeah. But it's like we have like it's guarding some secret recipe. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I get yeah. it. Like people want to do it because they think that that's going to make a check and they're going to make a living at this. And yeah. maybe a few people will. But. Is it really worth that kind of mentality? Yeah. Towards everybody else, I don't. I don't. I don't think about you, but I'm going to go where it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, they want to know our schedules this year. So, what does yours look like this year overall? <laughs> like grand scale, what's it look like? Very busy. Very um, busy. Okay. So I have. I actually have my schedule up on. I made a website. Uh, yeah, yeah I see it. Katefishing.com has my yeah. schedule up there, but I keep adding to it and I'm too lazy to go update it. But yeah. Um, so like just for now, like I'm gonna do like Palestine. Mm -hmm. And then after this, I'm going up to Arkansas uh to do the Northwest Natural State Kayak Angler up on mm -hmm. Beaver Lake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to add just in other regional mm -hmm tournaments for different places and try different things so i'm gonna go do beaver lake and then and then i'm going to tennessee then i'm going to Bassmaster at harris chain then sandy cooper mm -hmm. uh then i'm gonna be doing grand lake you fall a broken bow hopefully mm -hmm. and who knows a bunch of stuff in between i mean i've got mm -hmm. i've got a tournament at least every other week right now so nice a lot a lot of tournaments and and just but that's all gonna it i know it'll change mm -hmm. because the way that god's working in my life is things mm -hmm. change a lot mm -hmm. so uh you know we'll see mm -hmm. but oh, well I'll tell you what I, I that's a you you have a you, you're fishing some big ones there's no I'm doubt about fishing, it i'm trying to qualify for the aoi and mm -hmm. i'm trying to get to the toc and the Hobie, who knows if that'll happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying for, I'm trying to qualify for next year's Bassmaster and and mm -hmm. do the AOI race and that. I'm doing, trying to do the KBF same, mm -hmm. and I'm doing the All American. So those are my four main yeah series, and then I'm peppering in whatever regional stuff or wherever I want to go fun fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, the same here is that uh, my focus is on the KBF because I've been to my my deal is not how, how well I did, but I want to beat every KBF because I it's it's a different kind of animal. 
it's not one where you have to be an elite to qualify. It's it's an event. It's an event. Yeah. And it brings a lot of people together. And I just have a lot of friends there for a lot of years. And then the All American, of course, you know, I'll be able to fish, I think, five or six of those maybe this year. And then, but my big, my, my, my biggest one would be is uh, the Youth Adult League we're going to do on Monday nights. That sounds fun. You Two kids can fish together or a kid and adult, but two adults cannot fish together. That's pretty cool. And it's your best five. It doesn't matter who catches them. I love that. And, and it's free. And there's no cash prizes. That's awesome. And you get a poker chip if you win. <laughs> I love it. You know, it. and then, uh, and then we're going to keep points, but it's also to teach young kids, you know? So that's my, that's my, my ultimate, uh, tournament coming up or it's like five, six weeks. I think we're doing that, but yeah, um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Casey Carr, the good Lord put me in the sport to meet great like-minded folks, not to make a living. I couldn't win a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can I don't hang know out and have ham sandwiches though. Casey Carr, you know what? If if I see you, guess what? You're gonna get a cream soda from me for sure, because I can bring extra cream sodas with me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know if you know that or not, but after every tournament, I have one cream soda. Cream soda, I like it. <laughs> so okay, so I know we're getting. I would also, I would also say something. Um, yeah. Something I started attending this last year. Uh huh. Uh, at some of the hobies was the the at the time it was called the Kayak Fishing Fellowship. Yeah, now it's yeah. the Fisherman's Fellowship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're going to be at, there's going to be like a Fisherman's Fellowship at a lot of these different mm -hmm, big yeah, things. Yeah. And I know Matt Balls uh, mm -hmm. sort of run it at the, mm -hmm. I think it's Lake Murray uh, mm -hmm. this weekend. And there might be some others. Um, you know, I'm not involved in like how, it, how when it's going to happen or anything. But mm -hmm. I've really, it's really helped me grow in my faith there. Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. helped me to meet other people there um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i just think if if you're looking for some sort of fellowship mm -hmm. uh to meet new people and some like-minded uh some christian folks or just check out what the heck is going on with all these crazy folks over here yeah. uh you know just give it some time and stop by mm -hmm. and say hi it actually has some camaraderie <laughs> going on there. And it's, you know, every, we're all in the same boat with that. And I, I would just like to say, just check that out. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's worth your time. Yeah, I know Cody Prather's involved, I think a little bit too. And mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's so many people that are praying for us when we're out there. That's, what's great too, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know yeah, if you notice, we've done actually kayak church up here a couple of times. I didn't know that. Yeah, I actually had a, well, so well, I'm gonna have to. You have to tell me more about that, so I can go to. I will. It. I will. It's it's a lot of fun, and uh, I had a guy actually give the message on the shore, and everybody sat in their kayaks and listened, and then we went fishing. All right, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. It was kayak. We called it kayak church. I like it. <laughs> and uh, so hopefully, do that again here this year. I, I what I've got to do is finish what I'm doing now, hopefully, and and finish strong, and then uh, have more time to help develop new things. And I've got some other things I'm doing too, but same time though what tonight was about was you showing us what it's like to be out there on the road uh <laughs> your passion your joy for this right. um you know what it's all about and you know get back to the basics of how we, why we started all this you know because uh it's about the camaraderie there's no doubt in my mind you know and uh even at the bass elite level there's still camaraderie you mm -hmm. know on, in the boats and so forth but uh, I have learned so much from the people that have been on here like you. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in person here soon right <laughs> and uh, going fishing. And uh, yeah. just it's, it's an exciting year, I think. And I think that uh, we're all understanding what it's all about, you know. So anything else you, you want to give us here tonight? No. <laughs> I feel like we touched on a lot already. Yeah, Unless yeah. somebody had some questions I missed. I didn't yeah, know. I, yeah, I don't I don't know if we've had a lot of questions, but I know that there's been a lot of people tonight, quite a few. Um but and and I'm sure that um you know the message is clear that hey, you know, let's try to help each other out and uh you know, I know I've listened to a few people that have been on. They talk about how they've been nervous or scared and and feel, you know, they just don't feel confident being out there. It's 
it, there's always going to be somebody out there to help take you under their wing. Can yeah. I tell you though, that's a normal thing or yeah. it's normal for me. Like mm -hmm. I get scared every lake I go to that. Like oh. it takes me a great deal of courage on the first day to go to launch my boat. And sometimes really? I'll get there and I won't launch my boat till the next day because I get so, I don't know, mm -hmm. I get scared about new water and mm -hmm. you think mm -hmm. I'd get used to it after all this time, but I still don't. I just always, huh. it takes me, it takes me a little bit to get over that, that fear. And then once I get on the water, then I relax. Yeah. There's yeah. just something about that, you know, I'm yeah. by myself and the unknown yeah. and who knows what's going to happen. Sure. And, sure. Uh, yeah you think I would be used to it, but every single time it's like that. So I, I would just say, you know, if you feel that way, just launch your boat and you, <laughs> you get settled in. And after about 15 minutes, you go, okay, I got this. And mm -hmm. that's when you can do it, but it's definitely intimidating for sure. Okay. So yeah, I can, I can see where that'd be possible, you know, out there. So anyway, so that, We've had a great night here tonight, Kate, and I appreciate you Thanks. being on. Thanks, and I'm sure Others will see this, and uh, maybe maybe sometime. What I like to do is have you and Sandy Roberts on sometimes. I've had her on. That was fun. And then that see uh, see your your points of view for the year, you know, later on, and and see how it's going. The other thing is keep your videos coming of your excursion, your your uh, experiences because they're fun to watch. Okay. They really are. Yeah, I sort of stopped for a little while last year when I was going through some stuff because honestly, I don't want to distress everybody. <laughs> like, you know, but I'm back and uh, we'll do it. So thanks so much, everybody that came on and hung out with us and watched and asked questions and talked. I appreciate that. So thank you, Marty. Now he's going to freeze out. Oh, you can message Kate and go to katefishing.com, right? Uh, yeah, katefishing.com. Um, there's a contact in there if you had to contact yeah. me, okay. but you can hit me up. But I got uh, Kate Fishing on Facebook, and then I've got it in Catherine okay. Field, Catherine okay. underscore Field on Instagram. Okay. All right. Well, you hang in there. <laughs> and YouTube. So Kate oh, Fishing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And, and good luck this weekend. Have fun. Keep fishing. I'm and, gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna bundle up and uh, drag yeah. stuff around underwater. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna do. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm gonna okay. do. All right. I'm gonna end this here. All right. And I, I don't don't hang up though. I got to ask one more question here. All right.